Well, I'm what's called an Assyriologist, which no one ever understands because uh, the word Assyriologist isn't in common use. So I prefer to talk about myself as, as doing research in Babylonia and ancient Mesopotamia. And I've been very fortunate over, over the years I've been an Assyriologist to work on some fairly hot topics. Um, the principal one has been uh, joining in the, the recovery of uh, one of the greatest pieces of ancient literature called the Gilgamesh epic, um, which I started in 1986 and thought I'd finished in 2003, uh, but there's no end to the Gilgamesh epic. We keep finding new bits of it. So I've been able to, uh, to publish on the Gilgamesh epic uh, a, 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 an academic edition, a critical edition in 2003, but also a Penguin translation in 2000. And since then, a whole run of other further articles uh, adding to knowledge of the Gilgamesh epic. Well, I was here when the repository started in 2007, and I thought it was a brilliant idea to make uh, research available, free of charge, online to everybody, because it fits in with uh, my strong views that most academics have, that knowledge should be free and freely available. So uh, when the opportunity arose to, to put stuff online, um, I, I joined in and, and made sure as much as mine as possible was online, made PDFs of things that weren't available in PDF and so forth. And I've done that ever since. And um, uh, for me, it's a brilliant way to, to get my research out among the public, among other academics, uh, in a way that's very easy, uh, not time consuming at all, and of course free. I only found out about the popularity of my stuff on, on the repository about 18 months ago, and I was completely flabbergasted uh, that, that um, this obscure subject to seriology should produce knowledge uh, that seems everyone wants to download. Um, it's not just Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, you can understand, is, is a great work of ancient literature and there's a thirst for it, uh, as there is a, first, a thirst for Homer, for example. But for a long time, uh, the, the champion download, as it were, was an article describing the language Akkadian, and it was very attractively entitled Babylonian and Assyrian, a history of Akkadian. So for me, it was completely a matter of surprise when I, know, I saw that this article, for month after month, was, was leading the field on the repository. And I still can't explain it. But what I do know is that um, among uh, the general public, uh, knowledge of ancient Mesopotamia and thirst for it is, is something that's acquired later in life. Eighteen-year-olds have no interest, no knowledge of ancient Mesopotamia, which explains why they don't come to read Assyriology as undergraduates. But by the time they get to 65 and retire, Lots of people want to do a seriology, and they come along to do certificates with me. Uh, I presume that uh, some somewhere along the line in their lives, they've got interested in the ancient Near East, and I presume lots of people do get this interest, and, th and that's why uh, they're downloading all sorts of obscure things from the repository. Well, I guess being on the repository uh, has, has helped me in at least two ways. Um, it's very easy when uh, people around the world send me email messages saying, uh, you, you published on this, uh, where do we see more of it, where can we find more of it, just to point them to the repository and, and they can trawl through and find what they want then. But also there are people um, who aren't in academic life, who are not really interested in specific publications, but who do, who do want to know more. So uh, when I get inquiries from such people and I'm able to say, yes, I wrote about that some years ago, it's available on the repository, then they can follow the link and make the download. And in this way, uh, research on my obscure subject uh, reaches far more people than I think it would otherwise.